you think about aliens? I don't think there are any. At one time, I thought that there were simply based upon documents that I'd seen while I was attached to the intelligence briefing team, the commander-in-chief of the Pacific Fleet. At that time, uh, and, and even for many years afterwards, I did not believe that the government would use me in that way. I had devoted my whole life to government service. I had been in the Air Force. I was in the Navy. I was a river patrol boat captain in Vietnam. I had, uh, I had proved myself. I had combat ribbons with the V for Valor. Um, there was no doubt of my loyalty to my country. And maybe that's why it was so easy to use me, because I wouldn't doubt that what I saw was real. But over the years, I've done a lot of research. And what I've discovered is there's no proof existing anywhere that extraterrestrials are real or that have ever visited this planet, uh, or that they exist anywhere in the universe. There is not one shred of evidence anywhere. There is lots of evidence, tons of it in fact, that there are a group of people collectively known as the Illuminati who want us to believe in some extraterrestrial threat from space so that they can cause a world government, you know, bringing together of all the people to resist that external threat. Uh, and uh, the first time that I saw any reference to that, I was reading some papers from the Carnegie Endowment Fund, and there was a record of a speech, um, well, it was a dinner for Viscount Ishii of the Japanese delegation, the Japanese imperial delegation, in 1917. And John Dewey was, was one of the speakers. And the first sentence out of his mouth as I was reading this almost fell out of my chair because this was in 1917, and he said the best way to cause all the people of the world to come together in, in one world government and end war forever would be if we were attacked by some other species from some other planet. And boy, that just clicked with me, and I knew that, uh, that, that this is just another scam. This is the age of deception. There's no doubt about it. And then uh, eight times during Reagan's administration, he inserted almost the exact same phrase into eight of his speeches. And uh, it's a scam. <laughs> that's, that's what I can tell you. What they call UFOs, these craft that fly around the sky, are real. But they're not piloted by some little green guy from some other planet. They're owned and operated by the United States of America for one, the Soviet Union for another, uh, probably Great Britain, Canada. I think the, uh, the first really operable ones were probably manufactured in Western Canada, in the wilderness, in a, in a, in a place especially built to, to create those machines, like we created uh, the Manhattan Project, uh, and, and the same kind of secrecy surrounded it. So the technology is real. It's been kept secret and it's been used to promote this concept that there's an alien threat to this earth. The cattle mutilations I've discovered in my research are nothing more than, than what's left after the government uh, does its secret tests on the, the low-level radiation leakage from its atomic weapons, assembly plants, and atomic power plants. It's a low-level radiation monitoring project. And if you look at what's missing in the cattle, you'll see that it's just as clear as day. They take the lips, they take the tongue, they take a six-inch patch of skin, they core out the, the uh, rectum, the colon area, where those kinds of things would collect it. They would pass through the, um, through the uh, digestive system. On, on female cows, they take the, they take the udder uh, to check for low-level radiation in the milk. This is being passed to the, to the calves. And, and these are all grazing animals that graze on the grass that where the radiation falls when it falls from the air. And uh, it's just an incredible deception. And I'm just amazed that people have fallen for it in the manner that they have in the absence of any proof whatsoever. I mean, they cite hearsay as proof. Well, what about all of the alien abductions? They're not abductions, they're the results of a tremendously successful and very sophisticated mind control operation, all of which has been in development, um, well, they started working on those kinds of things since before World War II, but they have perfected them. On my website, I have a patent of a machine 
that can read your brain waves, can recombine them in a computer and send them back to you and make you think things happened that never happened. I mean, you can't get a patent for something like that unless it really works. You have to prove it to the patent office. It works. A patent was issued. And this is just one of the things that snuck by them that has it. Because when people invent things like this, they're sucked up by the government immediately. And then they're, they're put behind the veil of national security and classified, and then nobody knows about them. But every once in a while, something sneaks by them. And when you do these searches in the patent office and the trademark office and in the copyright office, you come up with some real gems once in a while. And that, that was one. Also, the congressional investigations into the, uh, the intelligence community has revealed the existence of these programs. And there's, there's no secret about it. It's documented. Project Artichoke, Project MK Ultra, um, MK Naomi. Um, you know, I could go on and on and on all day long. And, uh, you know, if you had the time in your movie, we could lay out all the documentation, which is official government documentation and prove uh, beyond any shadow of a doubt that it's true. But that's what it is. It's not extraterrestrials coming down. The human body cannot pass through walls or roofs uh, or, or through windows that are closed. You know, this is all the product of the imagination and, and people's willingness uh, to believe something because they want it to be true. I don't know why they would want it to be true. You see, because... If, if it were true, these are not friendly aliens. They're doing some terrible things to people. If I were to kidnap somebody, pass them up through the roof, and take them somewhere, and perform operations on them, and uh, take samples of semen and, and ova from their you know, reproductive organs and, and uh, plant thoughts in their mind and, and all this kind of stuff and then bring them back, guess where I'd be right now? In prison. That's kidnapping. It's criminal. It's a terrible thing. So uh, there, there's a uh, there's a morbid sense about all this too, as if people want to be hurt for some reason. I don't understand that. But that that certainly is something that uh, that somebody needs to look at. Why do people feel that this needs to be real? What in them says I want to be abducted and abused and kidnapped and, and raped and, and uh, all of this stuff against my will because they seem to take uh, some kind of satisfaction that this is happening and, and nobody's talking about the fact that this is a terrible thing to happen if I were to do that to you you wouldn't be too happy would you but somehow it's okay if an alien does it I don't think so it's all bullshit it's a lie and that's so where do you feel the hope for America lies? Oh, this is William Cooper, a man who received mainstream attention in 1994 when Rush Limbaugh read an alleged White House memo on the air calling him the most dangerous radio host in America. Maybe that's because his conspiracy classic is the underground bestseller, or perhaps it's because of the increasing popularity of his shortwave radio broadcast, which is also available on the internet. Good evening, you're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm still William Cooper. This was not an easy interview to Nat. He was the first person I asked, and after 8,000 miles and six and a half weeks on the road, just about the last to agree. I guess he wanted to make sure I was serious. Nevertheless, I had to come alone, and I was required to follow clear rules of conduct. Well, at this point, I've done so much research on this. Um, I have to tell you, there's only one way this is going. There's going to be a civil war in this country. And I hope the outcome of the war will be the reinstatement of constitutional Republican government. But whenever you have a war like that, you're going to have competing factions to be the winner. And whoever really has the power in the end is going to institute whatever kind of government they feel should be there. There are people in this country who believe that a religious theology, a theocracy, uh, should prevail. Well, if that happened, we'd have burnings at the stake again, and, and inquisitions, and heretics, and all of these kinds of things. So that can't be allowed to happen. Can't be. Doesn't matter what my religion is. It can't be allowed to happen. 
there are people who want a, a socialist uh, government, much like the one in Sweden. There are people who want to uh, create in the United States what the Soviet Union had hoped to be. Um, there are real Nazis, all of them socialists. Hitler was a socialist. So I see the future as being tremendously dangerous for all of us. Um, me and, and many others like me are, are going to perform a valiant attempt to reinstate, restore legitimate, lawful, constitutional Republican government. Whether or not we're going to be successful, I can't tell you. But I will tell you that once this war starts, it's going to be terrible, it's going to be bloody, and it'll last for 10 or 15 years. That's the nature of this kind of conflict. If you look around at all these mountains around here, there's enough guns, ammunition, supplies, clothing, and food buried in these mountains to support an army for 15 years. And I, I don't think the American people realize that they're on the brink of a civil war. You see, there are many of us who took an oath when we went in the armed forces and we meant it. We volunteered. We weren't drafted. We care about this country. And the oath was to protect and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And we will fulfill that oath, even if it means we die in the process of doing it. It's that simple. So what do you see happening in the next four to six months? In this well, I don't, I don't have a crystal ball. All I know is that the year 2000 is crucial to the plans of those who want world government because they whipped up sort of a millennium fever and they coupled that with Y2K and a whole bunch of other things. Uh, uh, real religious people who think that this is the end of the world and Jesus is coming or somebody's coming imminently. And uh, so there's this fever that's whipped up. I mean, everybody is, seems to be on the edge of some kind of hysteria. Uh, but it's all in their mind. If you look around, you see the world hasn't changed. It's not coming to an end. Uh, this hasn't been brought about by the hand of God. It's been brought about by the deceptions of man. And the quicker people realize that and try and find out who is causing these things to, uh, to whip up this hysteria, the, the better off they're going to be.